see the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. Okay. Uh, hi, it's Edwin Rutsch, and this is Dialogues on How to Build a Culture of Empathy. And I'm here with Hannah Adams, who is the Education Coordinator for the Fair Housing Action Center in New Orleans. Uh, thank you, Hannah, for joining me for this talk. Thanks for having me. And uh, the way that we got connected is that the Ashoka uh, is having a, a, a competition called Activating uh, Empathy Competition. And they had 600 uh, uh, submissions to the competition. And your, your organization and program was selected as, as one of the 15 finalists. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we wanted to do in this uh, talk, which is we're kind of recording it a second time, we ran into some problems, some of this though. Um, what we're going to do is uh, kind of explore, you know, learn about your organization and how your, uh, your program kind of relates to empathy. So perhaps you could just give an overview of uh, what the uh, Fair Housing Action Center is to begin with. Sure, yeah. So the Greater New Orleans Fair Housing Action Center has been around since 1995. We're a small nonprofit civil rights enforcement organization. Um, our goal is to um, eradicate housing discrimination um, throughout the state of Louisiana. So we do that in three ways. One is that we provide legal assistance to people when they experience housing discrimination. Um, one is that we provide housing counseling to homeowners who are facing foreclosure um, or dealing with other post-purchase homeownership issues. And then the piece that I'm involved in is that we try to educate the public about their rights under fair housing law. And we try to educate housing providers about what their responsibilities are. And for the last two years since 2010, we've been focusing a lot of time on working with young people, trying to train a new sort of generation of leaders to um, recognize the importance of housing choice. And so you had uh, created the Equal Opportunity Game, and it's a, uh, and that's uh, a, the, the uh, actual uh, program that was, that you submitted for the competition. So can we hear a little bit about that uh, game and how it kind of relates to empathy? Sure, sure. So um, I, two years ago, um, we began collaborating with some local teachers to uh, try to um, sort of meet uh, two goals. Our goal was that we wanted to uh, conduct outreach to um, families with children about their fair housing rights because one type of discrimination we see a whole lot um, is um, discrimination against families with children who are looking for housing. Um, and uh, the teachers we were working with were looking for um, innovative curriculum that would engage social justice issues. So we um, created this partnership and um, our organization created what we call the Equal Opportunity Game, which is literally a huge um, board game. It's giant. It fills a whole table. Oh, um, right. And the game educates young people about um, fair housing and equal opportunity. So. Um, so uh, the way it does that is by demonstrating the, um, the, the impact of housing discrimination on a family and on an individual. Um, so the way the game is played is that we work with classrooms um, of students. They're, they're placed into teams, and each team is assigned a character. And we, um, we have assigned certain characteristics to the characters. The um, student learns a bit um, at the beginning of the game about their character's race, their gender, um, whether or not they have a disability, how big their family is, what their um, parents do for work. Um, what, um, you know, how much income they have every month. And using that information, they have to um, determine what their character's housing needs are. Um, so, for example, um, a character who uses a wheelchair needs a house that is wheelchair accessible. Or a character um, whose um, parent or guardian doesn't have a car might need to live close to work in order to, um, you know, meet uh, the, do the things that they need to do on a daily basis and get the things that they need. Another character, you know, um, that lives with their grandparents and they have to get to the hospital two or three times a week so they need to live close to the, to the hospital. So those are um, the types of housing needs that they identify. And they begin to um, draw a connection between where you live and quality of life, right? Where you live and access to all of the things that you need on a daily basis. Um, we try to talk about fair housing as, um, rather than this sort of wonky legal issue, it's really an issue of access. So where you live is about more than the roof over your head. It's about um, your access to all of the um, resources and amenities that you and your family use on a daily basis. So it's about access to education and health care and, um, and uh, jobs and economic and opportunity. It, you know, where you live affects um, your exposure to environmental hazards and even dictates your relationship with the criminal justice system to some extent. So um, the kids begin to draw connections like that, um, uh, you know, at the beginning of the game when they're choosing housing for their character. 
Next, um, uh, we actually move into playing the game. And the game is, um, there, there's a picture up on the, the Ashoka website of it. But it's basically, like, looks like a Monopoly board. Um, and the goal is, you know, to get around to the finish line first. Um, and, but the students can't begin moving around the board until they get housing. Um, so they apply for housing and some of the characters uh, encounter discrimination. And they're not able to get housing that meets their needs. Um, and so they, so, um, so they basically get held back on the game board. They're not able to move forward. Um, and then when they do begin moving forward, they um, encounter, we've created these uh, situation blocks where they have to draw cards like in Monopoly. And the cards uh, detail different situations that have um, uh, happened to their, to their family. Um, and the, the students that have experienced um, discrimination, generally um, their characters encounter more barriers to getting the things that they want and need on a daily basis. So that's all by way of saying, um, you know, two hours later at the end of the game, the, the characters that received were able to access the housing that they needed um, uh, win the game. They're, they're able to make it to the finish line faster. Um, and, uh, and that leads us into a conversation about um, how this parallels real life, where people who encounter discrimination often have to work a whole lot harder for the things that they, that they want and need because of the great barrier that discrimination represents. Oh, and in terms of, you know, how does this um, connect with empathy, um, you know, the game, we created the game to give students an opportunity to step literally into the shoes of um, a person that has experienced discrimination. Now, some of the students we've worked with, um, it's interesting, you know, they'll play the game and then they'll be like, well, actually, that happened to my family. So they have experienced discrimination, but many of the students have not. Um, and so this offers them the opportunity to step into the shoes of um, a character that is, has experienced discrimination and really get to feel what that feels like, how that affects a person's life, how that affects um, a person emotionally. Um, and uh, we, you know, it leads to really interesting conversations um, about, um, you know, the importance of stopping discrimination. Because I feel like, you know, a lot of us as adults, you know, we're sort of, we've become sort of numb to a lot of, um, a lot of these issues. Um, you know, but kids, they're really, um, they, at least the age group we work with, which is mostly middle school students and um, older elementary school students, um, they are very invested in fairness. You know, they're invested in fairness and they believe the game should be fair. And this game is not fair, you know? <laughs> and uh, so they get very, very um, emotionally involved in that. And it leads to, I think, a pretty transformative set of conversations afterwards. Yeah, so <clears throat> in the game, it's really uh, different students are putting themselves into the shoes of, of mm -hmm. different home buyers and and mm -hmm. and uh, and so they're kind of seeing the perspective of others mm -hmm. as well as viscerally feeling what it feels like to be discriminated against or mm -hmm. to be uh, advantaged. And mm -hmm. then it seems like there is by experiencing that there's also maybe an action component that, mm -hmm. you know, going further, further on, they'll be kind of aware of, of this and kind of maybe work towards alleviating the, you know, the discomfort and the suffering uh, of others. Yeah, yeah, that's a huge component of it. Um, a lot of what we focus on after we play the game is talking about um, organizing and the importance of sort of standing up for justice in your community. We see, you know, young people, obviously, as the next generation of leaders and, um, you know, at the Fair Housing Center, we're interested in um, contributing to lasting change. And a lot of that involves shifting public opinion in the direction of an appreciation for um, uh, diverse, affordable, accessible communities. Um, and we believe that part of that is, is working with, with young people. Um, so we, we do talk a, great, a lot about organizing and change. We talk about, um, uh, you know, leadership and empathy as an important um, aspect of leadership that, you know, when, when these people who are now, you know, um, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old become leaders in their communities, they're going to have to go through this process again, right, where they step into the shoes of the people that they're working with, that they're serving, um, before they make decisions that, that impact um, their community. And I, I really, I don't know, I'm very optimistic, um, but I, I believe that it will um, make a difference in the long run, that the more students we work with, and that, you know, uh, we've met so many educators and organizations along the way of this sort of journey that, that um, are doing very exciting work um, sort of in this realm of uh, education, educating, um, you know, young people to be advocates for social change. Um, and, and so I think, you know, in the long run, this work will lead to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I actually brought it up here while you were talking about it. I went to the Ashoka site, site and uh, showed the uh, game board. And it looks like, uh, I would imagine that since it's a game, you know, children really enjoy that. It's like, oh, this is yeah. fun, let's play, you know? <laughs> so you're kind of creating a, a fun environment. And, and so yeah. it's kind of like learning through play. 
Yeah, definitely. They, you know, the kids have a lot of fun with it. And that was part of the reason why we chose this um, method for, for teaching kids about discrimination, because the kids get really involved. They, they get really into their characters. You know, we let them, um, you know, spend time. They, they draw pictures of their characters and give them names and they get very attached. Um, and that, and, you know, that's both fun. And it also makes like the impact even that much deeper when their character either experiences discrimination or sees everybody else experiencing discrimination around them. It becomes very um, personal for them um, because it's sort of in the context of, of play, right? Um, so the other thing I, I wanted to mention regarding empathy is that I, I think that the game is valuable um, in terms of its ability to um, teach young people about systemic issues. So a lot of times I feel, I, I feel like I hear this rhetoric um, where, you know, if, you know, you know, kids sort of internalize this idea that if, you know, your family's not doing so well or, you know, your compu your community is experiencing problems well, you know, it it's probably has something to do with, with you, right? You know, you need to work a little bit harder. You need to, um, you know, you need to uh, do this differently or that differently. And then you can, um, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps or whatever the, the way that, it, you know, it's said. Um, but, but the game kind of shows how... Um, you know, it's not just about um, the individual. There are all sorts of systems that impact the individual. Um, you know, they, they see that when um, they uh, when they when their characters experience discrimination. Um, how uh, you know system, systems impact families um, and communities. So, um, and that's not to say that within those systems the individual has no power, um, but that um, it com it, it uh, complicates the the narrative about. Um, about, uh, I guess, personal responsibility, which is something that we hear a lot from the young people we work with. Um, so that's been a really positive experience, too, is dialoguing with young people and their teachers about um, how uh, to um, look at the intersections between individuals and systems um, in, in communities. Yeah, so it sounds like you're creating a, also creating a dialogue about, you know, what is responsibility? What is personal responsibility? What is discrimination? So just creating a, a dialogue to kind of explore yeah. these different values and see how they relate to each other. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that, those are our, our goals of the project. And I would say the, the other goal of the project that I, that I haven't mentioned yet is that we... Um, you know, we hope that young people um, go home and talk to their parents and guardians about the game um, after they play it. We send them home with literature about fair housing. So, you know, we hope that um, through the young people, we can also get information to adults about their um, rights under under civil rights laws. Oh, so the kids go home, the children go home, and then they yeah. say, well, I just played this game, and it's about fair housing, and I learned this and that, and they engage in a dialogue with their parents, and yeah. it kind of takes the dialogue farther in in. in kind of spreads spreads it that's the goal yeah mm -hmm. and so um is this this is like a reproducible program that you're are you just doing it with with your organization or are you trying to promote it to kind of a wider um to other organizations or schools or yeah yeah we are we're trying to um figure out ways to well first of all the game is um part of a larger set of curriculum that we've created for young people we've also published a children's book um, about fair housing um, that we use with younger students than, than we feel that can play the game. Um, and uh, we have also created written curriculum around all of these tools that we, um, you know, distribute um, to advocates and educator, advocates and ed educators who are interested. Um, the, um, and, and we've, we've um, actually built relationships with fair housing advocates all over the country, um, as well as educators, uh, mostly in New Orleans, but we're starting to um, try to make contact with educators um, outside of the um, region as well. Um, the game is um, something that we are working very hard to figure out how to package um, in such a way that somebody else could um, take it and, and learn how to facilitate it. We've successfully done that once so far. We um, trained a fair housing organization in Michigan actually to use the game in their community. So they um, attended a training. Um, we put together a, a um, sort of a facilitation guide for them. And then we um, we sent them some games and they, they are now playing it with uh, with uh, young people in their community as well. So we're, we see that as a model that we can uh, replicate with um, other people who might be interested in bringing the game into their schools. Well, one thing that's coming to me is I, I like to look at uh, how empathy relates to other values. Like you mentioned uh, responsibility, you know, self-responsibility. You've mentioned uh, justice. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's this, you know, the, uh, the uh, social justice has a long uh, tradition and I'm kind of wondering, how does empathy, uh, how do you view the relationship between empathy and uh, justice? How do they kind of intersect? 
Yeah. Well, I think they intersect very deeply. I mean, I think that, um, uh, you know, holding values around social justice um, uh, re uh, require that one ha uh, has built a certain level of empathy. Um, a lot of, um, you know, people who grow up in um, various um, levels of privilege don't really have to think about discrimination on a daily basis. But if they... Um, can uh, go through an experience where they're asked to um, empathize with somebody who has experienced discrimination, who does have to think about it and its impact on a daily basis, then they can um, begin to um, sort of grow those values of social justice within themselves. So, um, you know, a good, a really interesting example of something that happened in one of our workshops is that um, we had a student whose character was actually one of the characters that wins the game. They didn't experience the discrimination, they win the game. And, you know, when we go around afterwards and we ask, well, how do you, you know, how do you feel? We expected them to say, well, you know, I feel great. We won the game. Woohoo. Um, but actually what this girl said, and, you know, this was like a fifth grader, um, very bright fifth grader. And she said, um, well, you know, yeah, we won the game, but I felt um, cheated. You know, I felt like I didn't, I didn't actually win the game. And then, so I, and I was like, wow, because imagine, you know, imagine if you had like policy makers and, business people and people with a lot of social power who were thinking that way, who were thinking, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not experiencing the discrimination here, but I don't feel right about other people experiencing it. You know, I don't feel like all the things that I have, all the, um, all the power that I have, all the um, success that I've had is worthwhile unless other people can experience that too. And I, I so I just think that, um, that the, the way that this girl was able to um, experience empathy through the game allowed her to begin processing um, and, and thinking critically about social justice. And I, so I see those two as very related. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like uh, that uh, by playing the game, you're seeing that uh, others aren't, aren't winning and are being discriminated against. You can kind of feel their pain. I mean, it's kind of yeah. painful to lose. You know, it's like, hey, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, you know, I'm being excluded somehow. Yeah. And so maybe the first step towards the justice is that sense of, of empathy for others. Yeah and then wanting to uh, make sure that others feel included and, and cared yeah. about. Yeah, and it kind of demonstrates that, you know, at least in the context of the game, you know, winning is, is not as cool when you know that the game is rigged. Is rigged. <laughs> you know, I mean, think about it. So, so uh, if you can apply that metaphor then to like a larger, you know, real life scenario, I mean, you know, uh, it, it sort of... It, I think for a lot of the students we work with, it's sort of like an awakening, right? It's like, oh, well, you know, um, I have to look farther than myself. I have to look beyond the scope of my family and my neighborhood. I have to, um, you know, really think about um, my community as a whole and whether um, resources are being distributed equitably and whether everybody has access to the things that they need, you know, so. Yeah, so in playing a game, you can see, well, everything's about winning, you know. Right, but, right. But then you realize, hey, the game's kind of rigged. Yeah. And I'm kind of like winning, you know, it's all about me, but I'm kind of being, you know, I'm kind of excluding others. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting, a lot of the times the kids say, well, you know, you cheated. They like point to each other and they say like, you cheated, you cheated. And we say, wait a second, you know, did, did your fellow students, did your classmates cheat? And they say, no. And I say, well, you know, who cheated? And, you know, they, they begin to understand that if anybody cheated in this game, it's the people who made the game, right? So in that case, it's me, right? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so they can all point their fingers at me. But again, like, you know, paralleling that with real life, you know, um, it, it sort of forces them to look at um, who really has power over communities, um, which, like we said before, or like I said before, you know, what systems are um, impacting communities and who has power over those systems. So um, I think, you know, we're training at a group of uh, people who are going to be excellent organizers, um, either as young adults or as adults. Well, it kind of uh, talk speaking personally, is there, do you have a story of, of how kind of empathy or social justice became important to you? Was there some moment where it was like a, an aha moment to see the power of empathy or social justice? And you said, this is what I want to do. Because you're obviously very passionate and caring about this. Well, yeah, I mean, I would, I would sort of plug um, the work of um, the Fair Housing Center. Um, uh, I personally have been very influenced by the work of the Fair Housing Center. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the work that we do is a lot, uh, you know, sometimes the work that we're doing is um, we, you know, hear that an uh, individual landlord, for example, has discriminated and we hold them accountable under the law. But a lot of times we're looking at um, public policy or um, zoning decisions or, um, you know, bigger things than just individual landlords. And we're looking at how those um, impact, um, you know, the families that come to us um, 
uh, with complaints after experiencing discrimination. And, and so, it, you know, working here and, um, you know, uh, being involved in um, the, the fair housing work has led me to have a better understanding of how um, uh, discrimination um, can uh, impact families and communities in really serious ways and how um, systems, um, uh, you know, specifically impact families, how, um, whether it's the, um, you know, specifically in the area of housing. So how um, access to housing, um, you know, goes beyond, you um, uh, you know, having a roof over your head, how it affects your access to all of these other um, resources. So it sounds like even doing this and working there, you start increasing your empathy for our people in general and kind of become more aware of the <clears throat> social structures that maybe inhibit uh, uh, yeah, people's empathy. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So I think, I mean, I think that that's, um, you know, uh, part of the value of the of um, the sort of fair housing movement is its ability to illuminate some of the connections between, um, uh, you know, different, um, you, you know, systems that impact families' lives. Yeah. Okay, um, I think that's been kind of an overview. Is there any kind of other points you think are important to cover kind of around uh, your program and uh, how it relates to empathy? So any points we haven't covered do you think are important? Sure, sure. So um, I think, um, you know, one thing that sort of has been exciting about this project is we sort of expected to spend a lot of time building relationships with schools and educators. And we've, we have um, with a lot of different schools and educators and um, youth serving organizations, but we've also um, had a tremendous um, sort of outpouring of support from other fair housing organizations around the country. Um, it's clear that, um, you know, a, a lot of us in the fair housing community are thinking about ways, and maybe in sort of the civil rights enforcement community in general, are looking for ways to go beyond simply enforcing the laws, right? And to think about how we can begin to um, shift public opinion um, in in the direction of the types of communities we want to see. Mm -hmm. So instead of just, you know, acting reactively and saying, you know, and sort of, you know, holding people accountable when they um, do bad things, we're, we're looking to create, you know, create uh, the type of society that we want to see, um, and, and part of that, I think, is um, is working is all about working with young people. Um, like I said, I feel like the young people we work with are, um, in addition to being um, totally brilliant, are um, very open and receptive to very complex ideas. A lot of times, people say, "Well, isn't this kind of a complicated subject to talk to young people about?" And um, the truth is that we find that the young people we um, work with really get the material. You know, they um, they because it's very basic. It's about um, being treated unfairly and how that makes you feel, right? Um, and then you can apply that to, you know, the people around you in the community that you live in. So I think that um, I've learned that, um, you know, creating an experience that builds empathy in young people is at the core of um, sort of building a movement um, for change, whether it's in fair housing or whether it's in any other area. Yeah, I've kind of come to the conclusion that we need like what I call a culture of empathy. So that's what you know I and the Center for Building a Culture of Empathy is working towards. It's really that we need to change the social structures, you know, mm -hmm. and change ourselves, become more empathic, but also the st social structures so that they encourage empathy. And it sounds yeah. to me like that's what your game does. Is that yeah. it, it, it's a tool for uh, taking perspective and and empathizing with others. So mm -hmm. it, it seems like a real contribution in that way. Well, I hope so. I mean, ultimately our goal, and part of the reason why I'm so excited about um, and honored to have been chosen as a finalist is we really just want people to know about this project. Um, we wanna, and we've already, because of this competition, gotten a couple calls from um, organizations that are interested in um, using some of our uh, curricular materials. We, we really just wanna get the word out and wanna share this with as many um, educators and advocates as possible um, nationwide. So. Um, so yeah, so that's been um, a great gift that Ashoka has given us just by, um, you know, choosing us as a finalist is sort of allowing us to um, share this work with others. Well, I want to thank you for sharing your uh, passion, <laughs> your passion and enthusiasm with, with me. And um, it really was delightful to hear about your program and I'm wishing you all the best uh, with it. And it sounds uh, really like it's going strong. So. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. Okay. Well, then uh, um, we have, uh, this is an ongoing project. So we are all doing also uh, panel discussions and so forth on empathy of a conference. So I invite you in the future to also uh, take part in a panel discussion. Wonderful. So, so. I'd love to. Thank you. Okay, uh, Hannah, thank you so much. Okay. For take sure. care. Thank you. Bye.
see the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world. 